John William Polidori was a British writer known for his friendship to Byron and for his writing The Vampire. He was born in 1795 in London, the son of Italian scholar Gaetano Polidori and governess Anna Maria Pierce. He attended Amplethorpe College and Edinburgh University and travelled with Byron as his personal physician. In 1816 he met with Shelley and Mary the future Shelley, a meeting which resulted in the penning of Frankenstein and Polidori's The Vampire. He died in 1821 in his father's house, apparently due to suicide. Today we will review his only full novel, Ernestus Berchtold, or the modern Oedipus from 1819. It concerns Ernestus, the foster son of the priest Berchtold, who adopted him and his sister Julia after finding their mother heavily pregnant and dying, along with an older man he assumed to be their father. Never finding out who they were, Berchtold adopts the twins and gives them his name. Many years later, Ernestus is wandering in the Bengen Alps, when he meets a pretty woman and is inspired to go fight against the French invasion of Switzerland. He joins two campaigns, but though he and his friend Olivieri are very brave, the cause is lost and the remnants of their army have to fight their way to freedom. Ernestus, however, returns home to see Berchtold, is betrayed by a servant, and thrown into prison. The prison is not so hard to escape from, especially as he has the help of the jailer's daughter, and that of Luisa Doni, the woman from the Vengan Alps. Accepted as a son by Luisa's father, the Count Filiberto Doni, he hears odd rumours about Doni's supernatural powers and seeming endless wealth. However, Olivieri decides to make Ernestus a gambler and ruin him morally, and only the help of the Count and Luisa bring him back from infamy. But Olivieri in the meantime seduces Ernestus' sister Julia, who dies in shame. Being told by the spirit she tries to call upon that she is damned, because of the fact she had premarital coitus, I guess? Her child is brought to the Doni house by Ernestus, but then the Count begs him to go to Switzerland and try to free Olivieri, who had been sentenced to death for leading a band of robbers, trying to bribe his judges, and describing it in full shameless detail, despite being reformed and virtuous now, he is betrayed, and Olivieri is mortally wounded and dies. Returning to Milan, he nearly stabs a supposed love rival to death, yet the man is so inconsequential to the story he only shows up twice. Luisa tends the injured man and agrees to marry Ernestus, but of course that might not go so well if you read the full title of the book. Luisa, whose health had not been good for a long time, starts fading fast, but before the two decide for a surprise for the Count, putting up a huge portrait of him next to one of Ernestus' mother, as taken from a locket, and the man faints in terror when he sees it and starts screaming about crime. Ernestus, despite the hints, still does not get what he means, until the Count gives him a confession of his life in writing, which he is to read after the Count's death. He does read it, but to his credit he does not say what it says to Luisa, and his behaviour to his dying wife does not change at all, even when he realises she is his sister, which is the whole not-so-big secret. The story ends and we get the written confession of Donny, and how he came to the east in the company of a man he knew to be his rival for the hand of Matilda, Luisa's mother. The two lose their fortune to an ambush of Arabian thieves, but a dying Armenian tells Donny how to summon a demon to receive riches, in return for personal tragedy and misfortune to those near him. The supernatural element is mostly minimal. There's an apparition of Ernestus' mother at one point, and we get told about the demon, but Ernestus never sees it, but it's never explained away as fake either. The book is rather enjoyable, but you do end up waiting for the inevitable reveal.